Hello people, I am Karishma Dumpala. This is the fifth lecture in the history of English literature series, wherein we are going to discuss about the Elizabethan period, which is also called as the golden era of English history. This period has witnessed many influential writers and some really great works. The previous lecture was about the age of revival. If you want to check the previous lectures, the link would be provided in the description box. Please make sure to follow them so that the timeline and chronology will be easy to understand for you. Let's get into the video. Queen Elizabeth has ascended the throne in 1558. The Elizabethan age is divided into two parts. The first part is the first 30 years that is from 1558 to 1588 and the second part consists of the period from 1589 to 1603. Some best poetry and drama was produced during the Elizabethan period. Thomas Wyatt and Earl of Surrey have published their first edition of English poems entitled Songs and Sonnets in this period. But before learning anything about this period, we need to look at the Renaissance movement. The Renaissance movement began in the late 14th century when people began to take interest in the classical literature of early times, especially in the Greek and Roman cultures. The word Renaissance has its roots in French language and it means rebirth. So it means rebirth of classical literature and learning. Before the Renaissance period, people were under the influence of church and did not look at the human aspect. They thought that God was everything and humans were nothing. But due to the influence of the classical texts where humans were represented as possessing much power, people after the renaissance period turned towards the human aspect of renaissance. We can see this in the paintings of Creation of Adam by Michelangelo. Humans are glorified in this period. So art became centered on the human individual and early experiences on earth rather than about the afterlife. Now let us talk about the impact of renaissance in Europe. Part of the renaissance was revival of ancient learning. The dramatic structure changed in the middle ages, that is loose structure to tight dramatic structure. The invention of the printing press by Caxton in Germany during the 15th century made the availability of the books easy. The printed books carried the fruits of classical literature called new learning to the people at large in different parts of the world. Manuscripts were replaced by printings. Literature became a commercial product. The printing press became a chief instrument for social change and religious understanding. Pamphlets became very popular. Renaissance manifested a new spirit in Europe. Europeans learned individualism from Greek and Latin scholars and worldly strength that is able to uh, manage the world and not become a victim of the social issues. Greeks always believed only in present and not in future. The Europeans mostly believed in the future. Europeans learned the idea of rejection of authority from the Greeks and determination to make one's own decisions. Typical writings of the Renaissance writers is from Greek and Latin works and that began in the pastoral side that is the setting is in the idealized beautiful description of a countryside. In imitation of Homer and Virgil, Europeans began to write epics but could not do pure classical epics and combined classical epics to medieval romance. Now let us talk about prose in this period. Essay as a form of prose emerged during this period. Some examples are Montaigne and Bacon. Montaigne popularized the prose form called essay into a literary genre. He is the father of prose. He exerted, exerted influence on Bacon, Rousseau, Hazlitt and many others. Francis Bacon was a popular essayist who is famous for his aphoristic style that existed in this period. There were a group of seven writers uh, who came just before Shakespeare and influenced him and paved way for him for a free and flexible drama. They are called the University Wits. The University Wits were Thomas Kidd, George Peel, Thomas Lodge, Robert Greene, Charles Marlowe, sorry, Christopher Marlowe, 
Thomas Nash. Let us now look at the development of drama during this period. William Shakespeare was one of the very important writers of English literature. He was born in 1564 and died in the year 1616 at Stratford on Avon. That is the reason why he was also called as Bard of Avon. He was um, he has written 154 sonnets and 37 plays in total. His tragedies were far more successful especially Hamlet, Macbeth, King Lear, Othello and many others. His last known play is The Tempest. Then comes Ben Jonson who is mostly famous for his comedies. He has written works like Every Man in His Humor, Every Man Out of His Humor, Walpole and many others. His characterization is based on the idea that each man is possessed and governed by some particular quality or master passion which may be regarded as the backbone and central feature of his personality which is depicted in a concept that he has given which is called comedy of humors. When we look at the poetry of Elizabethan period the main poet that existed in this period is Edmund Spenser. He was a greatest non-dramatic poet of this age. He was born in London in 1552. He is a poet of imagination. He contributed what is called as Spenserian stanza to English literature. Spenser's fame rests mainly on the Fairy Queen. The Fairy Queen is a fragment of 12 books which Spenser projected, out of which only 6 were published during his lifetime and portions of the 7th after his death. His Shepherd's Calendar is a pastoral poem. He has also written an elegy called Astrophil on the death of Philip Sidney. Charles Lamb calls Spencer the poet's poet. So yeah, that is it for this class. I hope you understand the important concepts that we discussed like the renaissance and the conditions of poetry, prose, drama during this period. And